Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon and welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Kelsey and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items for you. Your cameras and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website for additional sessions. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter for the afternoon, the Cooper Union. Uh, yes, um, let's see here. Okay, we're ready to go. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm an administrative representative for the Cooper Union. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, a little bit about our school. Uh, Cooper Union is rich in history and vision and focuses uh, uh, around inclusion and access. For example, uh, the women's right to vote was started here in our great hall. Uh, one of the biggest advantages for going to Cooper Union is that we have a small school community, but it's within the framework of New York City. We're in the center of a, the East Village. There are so many things going on there. It's just a great location. Um, our campus uh, our campus has only three buildings, but we got a lot going on at these buildings. Um, and uh, at Cooper Union, we believe in experiential learning uh, that crosses the boundaries of all three of our programs. Uh, a big advantage is that we have under 1,000 undergraduate students. This means a small class size and personal interaction with all the professors. Uh, for example, we have an eight to one student ratio. That is a lot of talking you're going to be doing with the professors, a lot of interacting with the professors. You don't get that at a lot of schools. Um, uh, here uh, at Cooper Union, we have three schools centered around design, creation, building, and innovation. Uh, uh, for example, the Irwin S. Channon School of Architecture, we order, uh, we have a five-year NAB accredited Bachelor of Architecture degree. This is the, the degree you need in order to become a licensed architect. Uh, students from all five years work side by side in a gigantic open studio where they work together on things like drawing, model making, and design development along with digital tech. Uh, for architecture, we offer a studio-based curriculum, which is uh, focuses on rigorous critique and debate about what you're doing. Um, the other school that we have is the School of Art. At the School of Art, it is a four-year degree in fine arts. There are no majors in the School of Art. We offer a holistic artistic working experience across multiple disciplines. For example, for the first year, all art students work in general coursework, such as drawing, painting, printmaking, photography, video film, and graphic design. This provides you with different perspectives and experimentations uh, across all the disciplines. Uh, all students in their sophomore year and beyond are given a dedicated workspace where they get to work on just their projects. It's a rare thing that these schools have. And of course, the third school that we have is the Albert Nurkin School of Engineering. In this school, we offer five degrees uh, in different areas, civil, chemical, electrical, mechanical, and general engineering. Uh, students normally come to our engineering program because they like to be challenged and rewarded with hands-on project-based learning experience. Uh, for freshman year, you'll study engineering and problem solving. This is where you work on projects that are important to, to society, such as reimagining waste, designing rain gardens in the city, automated robots, and in-refugee flight shelter kits. Uh, our highest performing students usually go on to pursue our integrated master's and bachelor's program. This is where you'll be able to attain both a master's and undergraduate degree in just four years. Uh, for the engineering program, we also offer minors in, uh, for degrees in bioengineering, math, computer science, and humanities. Uh, as far as our labs and facilities goes, uh, our students have access to like lots of labs, countless labs. Uh, a recent one that we're very proud of is our Art, Architecture, Construction, and Engineering Lab, or ACE Lab. Uh, this is where we have state-of-the-art technology uh, that allows students from all three schools to work and learn together. We have lots of equipment in this lab. For example, we have 3D printers, 
water jet cutters, CNC routers, inverting machines, along with many others. Uh, we also have a VIP program, which is an interdisciplinary venture. Uh, this is where you'll work with students across all three of the schools to work with common themes, such as designing a smart city. Uh, for student life, as far as a student life goes, uh, uh, our student life is focused around the interest that our students are passionate about. Uh, we have over 80 clubs, such as Dungeon and Dragons, a campus newsletter. We even have a cheese club. We love cheese. Uh, also, as far as uh, competitive clubs, we have Formula SAE, Kemi, and Steelbridge. So we have a lot of competitive clubs. Uh, as far as housing, we offer housing to all of our freshman students. It's an in-residence housing. It's located two minutes walking from our campus uh, building, and it's in the middle of the East Village, which means there's amazing food and also lots of other campuses there. So there's a lot of chance for cross-pollination with other students. Uh, our Res Ed Hall uh, offers uh, lots of uh, uh, kind of events for our students uh, just to help you get uh, 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 you know, uh, familiar with the city, uh, such as museum visits and annual apple picking. Um, and housing is not mandatory for uh, Cooper. So if you live in the city or if you want to live at home, you have the complete choice to do that. You do not need to live in our residence hall. And uh, we also, for student life, have an uh, Office of Career Development. And uh, this is where most students uh, get a chance to do an internship. Most of our students do two internships through their stay. And a lot of it is paid. And uh, of course, before you graduate, um, uh, you will be uh, uh, have like personalized assistance in finding out what your next step is going to be uh, uh, outside of the school. Uh, as far as financial aid goes, every admitted student is automatically awarded a half tuition scholarship valued at $22,275 for every year they attend. Seniors should apply for the FAFSA as early as October 1st, and exceptional candidates are automatically considered uh, uh, for additional merit-based scholarship. Um, uh, you should submit your application uh, by October 1st, 2021. I think all the applications are here. So engineering is November 1st, 2021. Art and architecture, December 1st, 2021. Um, and uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please stay in touch. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me at hillaryfernandez at cooper.edu. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Next up, we are going to hear from SUNY Maritime College. Okay, good evening, guys. My name is Ridge Robinson. I serve as an admissions counselor at SUNY Maritime College. It's a pleasure to speak with all of you. SUNY Maritime College is located in Throgs Neck in the Bronx on the East River. In this picture, you can see our training ship as well as our uh, student center directly in the center, along with our athletic fields, as well as the new Mac building. That's the building in gray. Um, we're a school built around the marine and maritime industries. As far as SUNY goes, we are the second smallest SUNY with 1,800 students. We boast two different types of lifestyles on campus, um, regiment and civilian. Regiment is 70% of our campus, whereas civilian is 30% of our campus. Um, of our uh, academic programs, we have 13 nationally recognized programs, five of which are ABET accredited engineering programs. ABET is the highest accreditation that you can get at the undergraduate level. As far as student life is concerned, we have 80 plus student clubs and organizations. If there isn't something that we offer, you have the ability to start a club uh, along with interested classmates. We also have 13 NCAA Division III varsity sports. In terms of academics, we boast very small um, classroom sizes, 15 to one student to teacher ratios, an average class size of 21 students. As you get deeper into your programs, you're gonna have more personalized facilitation with your instructors. You're gonna know your classmates as well as your instructors on a name to name basis. So as far as undergraduate ac academic programs go, we have five bachelors of engineering. We focus in the physical engineering's being electrical, facilities, marine, mechanical, and naval architecture. We are one in six colleges in the US that offer naval architecture, which essentially is ship, small vessel, and offshore structure building. We also have three bachelors, uh, three bachelors of science focused in business. We have a bachelor's of science in marine environmental science, as well as a liberal arts maritime studies. We also have an associates in maritime technology. Then there's also masters of science. 
um, in international transportation management, as well as maritime and naval studies. As far as professional experience goes, we offer two types of professional tracks here, and this is what um, splits our experiences on campus. Our civilians, which are our normal students, do professional internships in the summer. Engineers are required to do two internships. These can be paid internships through companies that we have uh, uh, relationships with. Um, they're typically required to do two, but often they do three. Our bachelor's of science students typically do two to three as well in uh, business, science, or the humanities. But where we differ from a lot of colleges is that we offer a United States Coast Guard license. This is a license that's focused either on top side, which is deck. It essentially enables you to become a captain someday of a large ship or any size vessel, essentially, or an engine license, which is internal with power and systems, working as eventually a chief engineer. The Coast Guard license isn't mandatory. It's for somebody that really wants to work on the water. Um, pay scales tend to be higher on the water. Um, um, and contracts tend to last anywhere from four to eight months when you graduate. Um, it's a really lucrative industry. This license requires you to be in the regiment of cadets. However, you could be in the regiment of cadets, which is quasi-military, without having to be in license. And so um, both students, types of students, are able to um, live in this lifestyle. Uh, it's just they're able to get different types of experience, prepare them for their careers after they graduate. Uh, as far as our application process is concerned, we are test optional going into uh, fall 2022. Our application is currently open. Um, at the bottom, you can see that early decision, which is a contractually binding application, um, is uh, the deadline is November 1st. We have regular decision January 31st. Uh, we recommend typically that you apply either, uh, we typically with the Common App, but you can also apply with the SUNY. Um, you'll need to do the supplemental application, which is additional questions related to your high school education, an essay. We need to see most current high school transcripts and one letter of recommendation. Test scores are optional. On the right, you'll see the average um, test scores and high school GPAs for our different types of bachelor's that we offer here. We do offer bachelors of engineering versus bachelors of science and engineering, um, which means that it's more schematic and design oriented. Um, as a result, you do have to have at least pre-calculus coming into your freshman year. Um, but the application process is presently open and you can apply now. If you have questions, you can contact me at rirobinson at sunymaritime.edu. You can schedule a Calendly invite with me if you'd like to talk more personalized and learn about more of our inner offerings. You can also reach me by phone at 718-409-4762. You can also check us out at Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We'd love to just show you our offerings and, and touch base with you and see if this is a place that would fit, fit your needs. I thank you for your time and I hope you guys have a, a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Next up, we are going to hear from Hampshire College. Hello, everybody. My name is Emily Billadu. I use she, her pronouns, and I am assistant director of admissions at Hampshire College. Uh, Hampshire is a small private liberal arts institution located in the gorgeous hills of Western Massachusetts in Amherst. I could go on for hours and hours about everything that makes Hampshire really special and really unique, but I only have six minutes to talk to you all tonight. So I'm really gonna focus in on what makes Hampshire different, what sets us apart from other small private liberal arts institutions. Uh, so what, there we go. So what I'm going to focus on for are going to be our narrative evaluations, the five college consortium and the divisional system. So starting off, narrative evaluations are the way that Hampshire professors evaluate students. They do not use letter or number grades. So instead of getting an A or an 83, students get anywhere from a paragraph to two pages of detailed written feedback at the end of every course. This allows students to take greater ownership of their learning. The evaluations tell you and anybody who's reading your transcript far more about yourself as a student, as a scholar than a letter grade ever could. Uh, it also removes the competitiveness from the classroom and encourages learning to be a more self-reflective process. Next is the five college consortium. So Hampshire has a relationship with four other schools in the area. 
um, making up the five college consortium is Hampshire College, Smith College, Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I like to think of it as five colleges for the price of one because as a Hampshire student, you have access to the classes, clubs, and resources of all of these schools for no extra uh, students on average will take about six classes throughout the consortium during their time at Hampshire. Some take none, some take 13, and a lot of students challenge themselves to a game of five college bingo where they try to take a course at each of the campuses before they graduate. There's also a free bus system to allow students to get around to the other schools and just to get around the Pioneer Valley really easily. So it's a great resource for our students that allows them to have this small college feel that Hampshire allows while having access to this network of much larger resources. Next, we have the divisional system. The divisional system is how each student's time at Hampshire is structured. Uh, we do not have majors. We do not even have departments. Instead, every student designs their own unique, customized, transdisciplinary program of study with the help of a personal faculty advising committee. Uh, the divisional system makes sure that there's structure built in along the way. Uh, and every student's time at Hampshire culminates in a division three project, which is a large scale independent research project that will take a different form for every student from a traditional research paper or lab experiment. But we also have students who write novels, do gallery installations, develop apps, do curriculum plans and so much more. Uh, the system really allows students to take ownership and take responsibility for their education um, while also letting you focus in on what it is you're specifically passionate about. Uh, Hampshire was ranked number eight among liberal arts colleges when measuring the impact of individuals who are connected to the college. Uh, you might recognize some faces in this collage of alums. 65% of Hampshire alums uh, receive an advanced degree within 10 years of graduating, and we're in the top 3% of colleges whose students go on to earn PhDs. 90% uh, of our alums receive reporting either a job offer or starting grad school within six months of graduating, and one in four of our students go on to start their own business or nonprofit. It's also worth mentioning that we have a gorgeous 800 acre campus surrounded by forests and also bordering a 2000 acre state park. So there's lots of outdoor space for activities, which we have lots of programming for. We're also one of the most sustainable colleges in the country. We have solar fields that are capable of meeting 100% of our energy needs. And we also house two living buildings right on our campus. Just to talk a bit about the application process, we are a Common App school, so everything can be sent through the Common App, which is open. Uh, and we actually do not take any SAT or ACT scores. The industry term is test blind, uh, meaning that even if you send them, we will not look at them. We do not believe that they are an accurate representation of your readiness for Hampshire. So don't bother sending them our way, they will be redacted. Um, and lastly, we are, a, we do what's called a holistic read of your application, uh, which basically means that we look at everything you send us to try and fit the picture together of who you are. We really want to get to know you as a student, as a person, so we look at everything you send our way before we make any type of recommendation on your app. If you want to know more about Hampshire, if you want to chat about student life, about the dorms, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email there on the screen, or you can check out admissions.hampshire.edu. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for your attention tonight. And I will go ahead and pass the virtual floor on to the next group. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Next up, we are going to hear from Mary Mack College. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Christine Carroll with Merrimack College. I'm actually currently working out of a Starbucks, so please bear with me with the ambiance noise in the background. Um, but I'm happy to share a little bit about Merrimack College. We are located in North Andover, Massachusetts, which is just about 25-30 minutes north of Austin. So it's really sandwiched right in between both the city as well as the uh, New Hampshire border. Really great location for internship opportunities, networking, alumni, but also all the fun stuff that Austin has to offer. Um, in terms of our actual campus, this is an aerial shot, so you can see they're very much that kind of traditional uh, campus experience um, in kind of a suburban setting. So we offer, you know, full residential experience. 73% uh, of our students do live on campus. We guarantee housing all four years, and it's a really active campus community. So 
if you're looking to get involved, play sports, or activities, have a lot of things going on, that is definitely where we are. Um, so quick facts about this, we're about 4,000 undergrad students, about 1,200 grad students. Average class size is 22. It's a 15, uh, 16 to 1 student faculty ratio. Uh, we have over 100 different academic programs, which I'll get into in a bit. And like I mentioned, a lot of activities, over 60 or student clubs that you can be a part of anywhere from self-identity and affinity groups to the arts, to academic clubs, to hobby-based interests and leadership. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get involved in. Uh, our students represent 38 states, 47 countries, um, and we are Division I athletic school. So we have a lot of great athletic opportunities for our students, also in club and intramural form as well. Uh, and fun fact, we are a Catholic Augustinian school. We are actually only one of two in the country, us in Villanova. Uh, and we were founded in 1947 under the GI Bill for returning World War II veterans. So service is a really big part of our campus community, if that's something that's important to you. Uh, in terms of academics, we have five different academic schools. We have our Gerard School of Business, which is our largest program on campus. Uh, so how it works is you're a business administration major, and then you can concentrate in one or a couple of different areas. So areas like accounting, uh, you know, marketing, things like that. Uh, we've recently added entrepreneurship and small business management, as well as hospitality management to our selection. Uh, and we also have grad programs within this area too. So we have what's called our double warrior, our four plus one, four years at the undergrad degree, and then one full-time year at the grad. We also have our School of Education and Social Policy, so we begin chronology, teaching, um, human development, that's a really great area. We even have a um, police academy on our campus if that's the route you're looking to go as well. Then we have our School of Health Sciences, which has been our fastest growing school on campus. Uh, includes our direct entry nursing program, exercise science, um, as well as our athletic training, which is a direct entry master. So it's five years, and you can actually apply into that when you're applying to the college. Uh, we also have our School of Science and Engineering, so our hard sciences, life sciences, as well as our computer and engineering program as well. Uh, that's also home to our more neuroscience and data science majors, as well as environmental studies and sustainability. Uh, and then finally, we have our School of Liberal Arts, so it kind of encompasses everything else that we have to offer, um, and that also includes our Discover program. So if you're sitting here thinking, I have no idea what I want to do, how do I choose a major? You do not have to choose a major going into Merrimack. You can certainly come in undeclared, um, switch your mind. Uh, we want this to be a flexible experience. We want you to take the time to explore. So with Discover, you'll get an academic advisor who will work really closely with you to intentionally choose a major. Uh, you don't actually have to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year, so it definitely gives you a lot of time. But if you know exactly what you want to do, you can really hit the ground running and start taking those classes right away. Uh, we don't have any impacted majors or anything that you won't be able to take and be able to start that year of freshman year if that's something you're interested in. And in fact, all of our students get a series of advisors starting freshman year. So you'll get an academic advisor, you'll get a career advisor who will start working with freshman year, and you'll get an academic success coach. And these are all mentors who are really going to work with them all four years, helping you know point you in the right direction, answer questions, and really help you get the most of your college experience. Um, there's all the variety of minors that students can participate in, so really cool areas such as film studies, forensic science, you can even do a self-designed writer as well. Uh, and then looking at our application pro uh, process, we are on the Calm app, calmapp.org. Uh, we are free to apply and we are also test blind, so we do not use testing, and that includes for our nursing and engineering programs. So all of our programs currently do not have any testing requirement whatsoever. Um, you can see our deadlines here. We have a November 15th, a January 15th, and then after that, we're rolling. So it's really about choosing the application deadline that's best for you um, and giving you the time and the opportunity to work on your application at your own pace. We know it's been definitely a difficult past year and a half, and we want to really work with you and be flexible. Uh, and then speaking of financial aid, so here at Merrimack, we do two forms of gift aid, the good stuff, you don't have to pay back. Uh, we offer both merit scholarship, which you're automatically considered for when you apply, um, and then need-based grants, which is um, what we use to determine when you fill the FAFSA. So when you fill that, we can determine amount of need-based grants to give you. 99% of our students get some form of scholarship or grant, usually a combination of both. Um, in this past year, we awarded $85 million in institutional gift aid, um, just to kind of give you an idea on how that looks. So again, everything that you're qualified for, you're reviewed during our application process. 
Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, we are around, we are open completely for visits. So if you want to come to a tour Monday through Saturday, we have open health on the weekends, we have academic free days coming up. So there's a lot of ways for you to connect with us. Uh, and Ashley Willis is actually the admission counselor who will be working with all of you. Um, I will leave her information in the chat so you can get in contact with her. And she's actually going to be doing uh, in-person uh, interviews throughout the area as well. So that way you can connect with her too. So thank you so much. And hopefully we'll get to see you all on campus soon. Thank you, Christine. Next up, we are gonna hear from Marist University. Awesome, thank you. Um, perfect. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Mungin. I am one of the admission counselors at Maris. I'm actually a, a regional representative. Um, I live in Alexandria. Um, it is my pleasure to be speaking to you about Maris um, today. Just want to, uh, I guess, provide a little bit of uh, information about Maris um, and show you some, hopefully the videos work and, and slides work uh, here. So um, Marist is a private liberal arts college located in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, we're located right on the banks on the Hudson River. Uh, so that's why hopefully you can see all these river shots. Our students do have access directly to the river. Um, we are a highly residential campus as well. Uh, so all the classes um, and majority of the students live right here at this uh, central location. We are about 90 minutes from New York City and 90 minutes from Albany. So we're nestled right in between and offers, uh, which offers a lot of opportunities for our students. Uh, we have just over 5,600 uh, students on our campus who are studying uh, over 40 different majors. I believe to be exact, there are 48 different majors um, with a lot of opportunities for those to become minors. Um, uh, there's a lot of flexibility for double majoring, um, having two or three minors, or uh, taking advantage of some of our certificate programs. We also have some five-year accelerated programs available for students as well. Um, we do have graduate programs. Uh, most of those students are taking classes online, but uh, we do have uh, opportunities for in-person, especially if you're interested in uh, science and, and um, allied health. Um, kind of realm where uh, we have a master's in phys physician assistant program and a doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, we have students coming from all over the United States um, and all over the, the globe, really. Uh, we are, in terms of class sizes, are pretty small. 16 to 1 um, is our student faculty ratio. Our class sizes average 18 uh, to 26 students per class. There are no lecture halls on our campus. All right. Um, these are all the different academic programs. Uh, one thing that is, I would say, unique about Maris is um, students, when you apply, you are accepted to the school as a whole. You're not accepted just to a particular program. So what that means is um, that's how our students have the flexibility to be interested in American studies, but take uh, classes in fashion and, and uh, computer science. We, we really want students to be able to uh, find a degree path that best fits their goals and needs. Uh, needs. And it starts with um, being able to uh, take classes within wherever you're interested in and, and really um, take advantage of that. So uh, that is awesome. And I'll get to the application dates. But uh, another thing, most of the programs that we have at Maris, you do not have to do anything in addition to um, apply for them, except Two, uh, two programs, our fashion design, well, three programs, our fashion design, uh, one of our studio art programs, and our uh, interior design programs. Those all require portfolios. Everything else, uh, we we know that we can teach you from uh, start to finish. So um, you do not need to do anything extra there. Uh, our, all, our academic experience has an emphasis on uh, uh, hands-on experimental learning, which comes in many forms. Uh, we have state-of-the-art facilities on our campus. We try to provide students with internship level opportunities before they leave campus. Um, we also have internships on our camp, uh, sorry, we also have internship um, opportunities available for students. So 83% of our students will go on to do at least uh, one internship. Many will go on to do more. Um, we also uh, have research opportunities for our students. 
uh, student faculty research is prevailing across all academic schools. You can start as early as your first year. And then uh, we send students abroad as well. So um, we have over 70 destinations. Uh, we actually have our own campus in Florence, Italy, a, a secondary campus there. Uh, so there's, there's just tons of options uh, for students to get involved. And we try to make it as accessible and easy as possible for students to do that so that they can uh, take advantage and have a uh, pretty unique experience for themselves. Um, again, we're a high, highly residential um, campus. So we have a ton of student life um, activities. Uh, there's over 80 different clubs and organizations. We are a division one school. We have 23 division one sports. Um, People go to the game, there's lots of uh, school spirit. And then uh, we also provide other activities for our students. So we actually um, have uh, $25 tickets to go see Broadway shows, uh, to uh, baseball games down in the city, um, to different concerts as well. So a uh, great way to get involved. Just wanna keep track of time here. Um, in terms of applying to Maris, these are our deadline dates, November uh, 15th for early action and early decision. Um, early decision is a binding agreement. February 1st uh, for early decision, March 1st for uh, regular decision. Uh, we are test optional. We have been for uh, going on 11 years now. So we have no plans to change that. Um, you do not have to submit test scores to get accepted or receive scholarship. We think that four years of um, high school academics is a great indicator of how successful you'll be at Maris. Um, we do also review applications holistically. Uh, we are open for visits in person. Uh, we have virtual programming as well. So just go on our website, seven days a week we're open. And uh, this is my information uh, for after this. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to me and I'll be in the chat if anyone has questions. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jesse. Next up, we are gonna hear from the University of California, Berkeley. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jua Howard. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of California, Berkeley. So I'm gonna just take a few minutes to tell you what makes us a really special place and why it may be a wonderful fit for you. So specifically, uh, Berkeley, we are a four-year public institution uh, and we are part of the overall University of California system, um, which includes nine undergraduate campuses. You see us reflected here on this slide. I always encourage you to research all of us. We all have something very distinct about us. However, we are the flagship campus for the University of California system. We're located in Northern California, about 20 minutes outside of San Francisco. We're also about 10 minutes from Oakland, 45 minutes to Silicon Valley. We're also not far from Napa and Tahoe for those weekend trips. So you're very centrally located when it comes to resources, internships, job opportunities, not to mention it's a very rich culture when it comes to restaurants and music. So you really have a lot that you can take advantage of uh, due to our location being so central and close to so many different other communities and cities. Now, one of the best things I think that makes UC Berkeley such really one of the best schools in the world, hands down, are our students. We have over 30,000 undergraduate students. Uh, they represent all 50 states, US territories, and about 100 different countries. So it's a very global community. And as you see, we're very much about access. So 74% of our freshman class are coming from public schools. You see 29% are Pell Grant eligible. We're talking about financial aid. 26% are first-generation college students. So we're very much always about, again, adding to the level of diversity in our community. And I think our students very much value that. And it's an ongoing work that we do every single year. And another key part of the Berkeley experience is the academic breadth. We have a lot that you can take. You see, we have well over 150 different majors and minors that you can access. They're split between five colleges and one school. College of Letters and Science is our largest college, has about 75% of our students. Everything from your arts and humanities, your bi biological sciences, physical sciences and mathematics social sciences and interdis interdisciplinary study majors. But we also have our College of Chemistry, one of the few in the nation, College of Engineering, which is our most competitive program to be admitted to as an incoming freshman. It's one of the best programs in the US. Environmental design, that's more like your architecture, urban planning, natural resources, if you're thinking about something in the environmental sciences or maybe in the health field. And then finally, business, HOTS, second oldest business school in the United States, excellent reputation. So you have a lot to explore. That guide.berkeley.edu is a great resource. Please visit it and really look at our different academic programs. Research is a cornerstone of UC Berkeley. The flu vaccine came through our campus. Vitamin Z and K came through Berkeley. So we have a lot of ways for you to be engaged in research, whether it's through your app, 
the undergraduate research apprenticeship program when you're applying as early as freshman year, you're working with faculty and staff researchers in a diverse range of different areas, or even STEM, seed scholars, STEM excellence and equity and diversity, four-year program really helping you get your feet wet in research and also apply for graduate school. But we also offer, let's say, decal courses, which are courses that are created and taught by students. So in a lot of ways for you to really own the educational process. Student life is vibrant at Berkeley. As you see, we have over 1,200 student groups and organizations, everything from academic-based, um, cultural-based, professionals, a lot to do, never short of things to be involved in. If you love athletics, we are Division I, part of the Pac-12 Conference, 20 different varsity teams, 34 club sports, and we have intramural sports. So again, this adds to the vibrant community that we have on our campus. And then a part of that is also leadership, which we value. You may want to be engaged in student government, the Associate Students of the University of California is one of the largest and only independent student groups in the nation. You may do work through our public service center, maybe come back to the East Coast for a semester and work in one of the Smithsonian's or work on Capitol Hill. Or you may work on campus with a program like BUILD, which helps local youth learn how to read. But because of this commitment to engagement and to service, um, and really activism as well. We're still the number one producer of students who have gone into the Peace Corps and actually number two overall into Teach for America. Not to mention, as you see, we're number two in the world for grads who go on to start their own businesses. So our students are very successful because they come in and really cultivate that sense of leadership. Some key things about our admissions process, we also practice a holistic review process. So we're looking at everything in totality in your application and looking at it in context of where you attend school and are you maximizing the resources at your respective school and in your surrounding community, very important. We are also, we call it test free, which means the same thing as test blind. We will not consider your SAT or ACT in our admissions process. In addition, we have one application, the UC application. It is shared uh, through all nine UC campuses, similar to the Common App, but it's just for our campuses. That's where you apply to be a part of one of our communities. In addition, lots of recommendations are not required, so that's not a part of the process up front. If we, we need to know a little bit more, we may reach out to you and request letters of recommendation. So the process is a little different. And finally, personal insight questions. These are short answer questions. You have to answer four out of the eight. You have 350 words per response. Take your time, be clear, and tell your story. Application is live now. You can work on it now, but you cannot submit it until starting November 1st. You have the month of November to submit your application. Doesn't matter when you submit it, as long as you meet the deadline on November 30th. We will notify you at the end of March. And if you've been admitted, you have until May 1st to tell us yes or no. So that is it. Again, Jua Howard, I do represent the Mid-Atlantic. So here's my email address. I'll put it in the chat as well. Reach out if you have questions and please engage with us online on one of our social media platforms. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And now that we've heard from all six colleges and universities tonight, I'm going to ask our representatives to join me back on camera. And we are going to answer a question. Um, and that question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? And we will go, we'll start in the same order. So we'll start with the Cooper Union. Um, and it can just be uh, one quick fact um, that you want students to remember about your school and just go in the order in which you presented. So thank you. Uh, uh, one thing I would have them remember about our school is that we have under a thousand undergraduate students and our student ratio is eight to one. That's a great thing. Uh, another thing is that we are in the East Village of New York City, so surrounded by other universities to cross pollinate with, as well as the New York City culture of the village. So yeah. Hi, SUNY Maritimes built around camaraderie. So a lot of what we're known for is having a deep network of graduates that help each other out. Um, coming here, you know, you're gonna have help throughout your career um, and you're gonna meet people in every type of industry that have, have went to a maritime school. So it's a really interesting place um, to go to college and to build, build friendships. I think the one thing to really take away from Hampshire is the fact that every single student designs their own program of study. You have complete control over the classes that you're taking. You get to undertake this big independent project at the end of your time. That is just the answer to the question that drives you. Uh, that's what I would add. 
I think the big takeaway from Merrimack College is the amount of just high touch in the classroom with the professors and with your mentors and the amount of opportunity that opens up for you. So whether that's wanting to reach out to professors for help or research or just being able to have that familiar face in the classroom, our students really get that one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, I think for Maris, uh, the, the thing to kind of take with you is uh, we have the personal touch of a liberal arts institution, but uh, with the power of a um, global university. Um, so you, you got the opportunity to really get uh, close and connect with your faculty while going on to pursue some great things. I, always, I think I want students to understand that Berkeley and kind of get it outside the concept of rank. Uh, this concept is about the quality of education and what are you going to really do with your time on our campus. What I love about Berkeley's campus is that I mentioned it being vibrant. Students are very much collaborative in their thought process. They're very much about thinking outside the box and understanding that it's bigger than just them. Great example, this year we've had a garden going for the last almost two years now. The produce that's been produced has been given to our basic needs center to give so that our students and our faculty have groceries, um, those who are struggling. And to me, that's very reflective, I think, of the UC Berkeley spirit. So definitely know that in addition to all the other data that I talked about, I think that's important to know about us. Great, thank you all. And we have time for one last question quickly. Um, and that is gonna be, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So if you each just wanna give one tip, pointer, um, piece of advice. We'll start back with the Cooper Union. Uh, yes, I would say uh, go visit the schools and talk to the students there. They're the people that really know what's going on. So I would say make sure you talk to the uh, student body there and they'll tell you what the school is really like and you'll know if it's good for you. Uh, also, uh, be boastful in your application. This is the rare opportunity you get to be uh, brag like that. So also do that in the application. Yeah, to key off of that, I would just say that, you know, really put yourself out there. You know, it's easy to do this from abroad, but make sure you're visiting the colleges that you're interested in. Make sure you really invest some time to research their offerings. Make sure you're picking the right school at the end of the day. It's easy to just apply to five schools and pick one, but make sure that you're actually checking everything that they offer out because you don't want to get there and feel like you didn't make the right choice. So really flesh out, you know, your decision making process during the the application. I would say don't be afraid to ask your admissions counselor questions. Like we are here to help you. We are here to help you figure out if the school is the right fit for you, but also to be an advocate for you. Uh, that is a huge part of our job. We are not scary. Uh, we're actually usually really nice. So don't be afraid to say hi, give us a phone call, send us an email. We're, we're here for you. Um, I think actually a really big piece of advice I have is try to enjoy this process and enjoy this time in your life. I know it can be very overwhelming and stressful and especially on the heels of everything that's happened. But for those of you who are going to be a senior, this is such an exciting time. Um, I'm very grateful that most of you are probably back in person. Uh, and so try to enjoy it. Try to have that perspective that this is such an exciting time. I really truly believe that everyone will end up where they belong. Uh, and so to just trust this process, go with it. But again, don't let it consume you to the point where you can't enjoy this really special time because it's going to go by fast and this is where those great memories are made so uh, utilize all these resources so this can be a better experience so you can enjoy that senior year <laughs> um i guess to piggyback off of uh, what everyone's been saying um i guess i'll go more in organization and and, and process uh if for example if you're applying to all the different schools that are here we all had different dates i was like noticing um so try to be organized write down like make a list of this school needs this information by this time um this way you're not stressed you know what you're doing uh be early if you can uh this way you can just like in enjoy yourself and i'll kind of touch back uh to emily's point about resources and i think another resource that's happened to is your college advisors your counselors right there working with you every single day their job is to help you through this process we work with them so that they understand what we're looking for and vice versa so please 
get be have honest conversations with them let them know where your head is so that they can really give you some sound advice and then as well have some honest conversations with your parents uh you are still running this process but you need to talk to them even if it's one day a week talk to them even you get a sense of what's important to you what can you all afford those are very important conversations i think to christine's point so that you can enjoy the process but you got to have those honest conversations so that you really can make that have some really make some so some selections that make sense for you to be able to find that fit. So tap into again to those resources that are there for you as well. Awesome advice. Thank you all so much. Um, and thank you for everyone for joining us today. Um, that will conclude this session. So when you close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Now, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session's recordings at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. Thank you all so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.